All right. Well, my name is Mark Alfano. Hopefully you all know that. I'm a Platinum 5 ambassador with this amazing uh, company, Valara. And this is our Monday morning training. And basically what I'm going to do is go over some things that can help you, not just with Valara, but with life in general and, and any business that you ever put your mind to. Um, obviously, I'm going to gear it towards this company, but you know, I keep these recorded. People can go back and watch them. And, um, and hopefully you guys are getting something out of it. Um, one thing I want to touch on is the last training I did, I was going over like the steps to win the trip, you know, and then because I was going based on information that Mike Jackson had said on the previous Monday night and, um, and then Bill Coyle went over it again. So the information Mike gave wasn't accurate. Um, maybe it's cause it was so new that, you know, he didn't know, didn't know or whatever or changed, but, but anyways, it's not, it's no big deal. So the one, what I had thought was, is you got one point for each person that came in. And then like, I talked to Bill Coyle, I called him and I said, Hey, look, this is what you guys originally said. And he says, look, Mark, he goes, this is a $7,000 value of a trip per person. You know, so in other words, if I win it, Christine and I are both going, so it's a $14,000 value. And he goes, we can't just give it away for giving away free products. He says, there has to be uh, income that comes into the company to justify giving away such a great trip, right? So that makes sense and I get it. So the way the um, subscribe and save is gonna work for your trip is as you sign people on in any given month, if you, okay, so when somebody joins, they're in what's called the fast start period. Fast start period runs for the basically the month they join plus the next two months. So if somebody joins in January, it's gonna be January, February, March. As long as that person is has an active subscription in, in their fast start period and you have five people, okay, so you have five new people that are in their fast start period that are on a subscription, the company is going to give you one point. The max is 12, okay, so that's one per month. Now, I've already talked to Pastor Eric about it and, uh, and I've put a bug in the ear of, of a few people that I think that they shouldn't cap it at one per month. So like, let's say I have a month where I do, you know, bring in 20 people, they should give me four points, cap it at 12, um, but that hasn't happened yet. So, I mean, sometimes things take time to develop, um, but that's a suggestion that I made to corporate to help us get front end momentum on the year. But either way, if it doesn't, if they don't do it, they don't do it. So when I was talking to Bill Coyle, he said, the other thing is, is being that this is our 100th anniversary, if somebody in the course of this year brings in 100 people on the free subscription, 100 total, they're going to give them an additional 10 points towards the trip. Okay, so 10 points, you know, you need 50 total. And there's more than one way to reach the 50. Okay, so the one, one thing is, is that every time somebody joins your business on a pack, that's going to be one point. Uh, if that person reorders an additional pack or another pack or another pack, that could potentially be extra points. I think they have to be in there. I don't know. No, it's any time throughout the year. So it's not even during their fast start. So if let's say you sign up, you know, if I sign up Dale and Dale goes out and he gets somebody who, you know, he sells a pack of three. And if I can teach people, look, when you come in, just focus on selling a three pack or selling a whole house protection. You know, and as they're out and they're moving the products and they keep replacing it with another pack, if that person does that five, six times a year, that could be five or six points towards your 50 points. Okay, and that's just one, all right? So the key is, is, is bringing on fresh people into your business, either free with subscribe and save. So you need to have five active brand new people each month to get one point, but it carries over, it carries over. So let's say I bring on five people in January for free with a subscription, okay? Five new people in the month of January for free with a subscription, that's one point, okay? Uh, I'll read that in a second, Kim. Um, so that's one point. Let's say month number two rolls around and two of the five cancel their subscription. Now I have three still on. I need to make up the extra two, okay? Because those, you know, I, I need to have five. So then I would get two new people to come in on a subscription. I get another point. The next month rolls around, all five stick with it. I don't need to worry about it. 
Okay, but then the next month, those first three, those first ones are going to drop off because they were in their fast start period, fast start period, and so you start bringing new people in. So don't try to really figure it out. My strategy has always been speed over over strategy. So just bring in as many people as you possibly can on the free subscription. So if you bring in people for bringing in people right to join our our company, set them up on the free subscribe and save and join. And then you know, think about it. The person's going to get in your business. Now they're hopefully they're joining on a pack because that's the smartest way to really join the business. Um, but let's say they're not coming in risk free. But if you but now my whole stipulation to anybody coming in risk free is is that's cool. But you need to make sure you get your first month's free subscribe and save. That's a game changer, guys. I mean, because once somebody experiences essentials for life or resist or keto zones or or um, whatever they re revive for one month, they're going to be hooked on it, right? At least they've experienced the product. Most people join the business risk-free, they never buy anything, right? They get in risk-free, they think it's some magical thing where, oh, I joined the business, so I'm going to make millions of dollars. I don't have to do anything. No, you actually have to sell products to make money. So by them getting the first months for free, it at least exposes a new person and it gives a little bit of skin in the game because now you're actually filling out a form. You're, you're signing it. You're checking boxes. You're putting your credit card information in. Your, your, your skin is now in the game. It's no different than if I'm online and somebody says, hey, um, we have this great, amazing new app that's going to be a beneficial to your life. And you go, awesome, man. And you, you, hit, you hit, it's free, boom. And you click on it. And then it says, uh, enter your credit card. Well, I don't want to enter, enter my credit card information. Well, it's because they want you to subscribe to their program. The first month's free and I can cancel at any time. The same thing's going on with this, with this promotion. First month is free. There's no strings attached. There's no hidden agenda from Valara. They're not trying to trick people or nothing. First month is free. So, and it's cool because when, when that order processes, so when corporate goes in, they take that sheet and they process the order you'll get an email the next day that says that subscription has been canceled because that that was a one-time deal. Now they'll re-enter it for, for month number two and then you're going to pay for it. But you can manually log into your back office, go to your subscriptions and edit it, change it or delete it. You don't have to keep it for the full six months. I recommend keeping it because it's, you know, you're going to see great value and plus the company makes you active. Okay. Um, so what does that mean? That means in your first six months, in order to be considered an active, active to get paid on your team or whatever, you need either 100 points or you need a subscription. And what the company's doing is, is not only are they giving you that, but the first month's free subscription actually counts towards somebody being active in the business. So now they're they're joining for free, they're getting free product, and they're active in the business, which is mind blowing to me. I, I didn't think they would do it like that, but they did. And so if you just stayed on it for the first six months, now the first full six months of your business, you are considered active and it's a minimal cost of activity. We don't charge you for a website. We don't charge you for any of that stuff. So, and we're giving you a product of great value for that. Most companies are like, hey, look, if you're going to be in my company, you're paying 50 bucks a month just to be a member. No, we don't do that we give you a product that's worth 50, $60 and you take it and you feel better or you sell it or you do whatever you want to do with it. Okay. So anyways, just want to throw that out there. So I had somebody ask me the other day, they said, Mark, they said, what does it take to get people to get active? Right. And so I really started thinking about that. What causes people? I, so I took it backwards. I said, what causes people to not be active? Um, well, what one, number one thing, in other words, there's two things that came to me that, that are, that are keep they keep people out of activity. Number one is fear, and number two is doubt. Okay, so fear is what grips people from actually get moving forward in their business, right? And I've got people that are are like, I mean, they're gripped by fear when it comes to talking to people. They don't want to call people. They don't want. They're frozen in their momentum because they think they have to have all their ducks in a row before they can actually go out. Right. And I heard a guy say one time, he said, ducks don't get into a row until they're actually flying. OK, so you can ducks can be scattered all over a field somewhere. It's not until they actually put flight that they'll line up. OK, so you can't expect that all the pieces together before you take off. This is not like 
I mean, it's not like you're going to the moon on a rocket ship and everything has to be perfect before you hit go. This is a business, man. Businesses, you just go. I mean, you you start, Christina, turn on your phone. You start where you're at with what you have. I got an echo in the background. <clears throat> anyway, um, so you start where you're at with what, Christina, it's called the volume mode. Exactly. Anyways, thank you. Uh, nothing worse than like having an echo in the background of your own voice. But anyway, you start where you're at with what you have. Take as much information as you have and just run with it. Okay, you don't need everything. People are always like, I talked to a guy the other day. And he's like, well, Mark, I really just, I don't know the whole thing. And I don't understand the pay plan. And I don't understand this. And I don't understand that. And I said, who cares? Like literally just, just go. Like take the little bit of information you have. Take your excitement and, and build momentum. Okay, so fear. So what... What can you do? What is the opposite of fear? The opposite of fear is, is boldness. Okay, so you have to have boldness to overcome your fear. How do you overcome fear? By stepping out in boldness. Okay, so it's almost like when you're like as a kid, and I'm like, I see this with my son, right? So like we'll go to ride a roller coaster and you can see like he's he's like nervous about like physically scared like i don't want to go on that ride it has a loop in it and i can see i hear people screaming and whatever right but it's not until you step into that like the boldness is is saying i don't care how afraid i am i'm still going to get in the seat and strap myself in and just do it and that's where boldness comes in in your business so now i can i can do the exact same thing in my business that, he, that my son did when he got on a roller coaster and he was freaked out. I mean, I can show you the pictures of it, but he did it, right? And there's a sense of accomplishment. Now, he didn't like the fact that he did it. He was scared, blah, blah, blah. But then later on in the day, he says, you know what? I actually liked it. So how many of you are frozen in fear that a little bit of boldness is going to push you out to the next level, right? And it doesn't matter if it's in Valar or whatever it is you do. Okay, so if, like I'm in ministry and the same thing when we first got started going door to door, I had fear, right? And I don't want to do this. And then then you just, I just said, forget it. I'm going to take boldness. I'm stepping out on the water and I'm going to have faith that everything's going to come into place. And I'm going to, the company has built an amazing structure. They've got all the data, all the research. They have the website, they have support, they have, they have trainings and calls and meetings and, and all these things. So I don't need to worry about any of it. I just need to, to take a step of faith and move forward. I have to, to just engage in the process. Okay. Number one fear. Number two is doubt. So a lot of times people doubt, they doubt themselves. They doubt the product. They doubt the company. They doubt everything. And they freeze up because of doubt. I'm not moving forward. I'm not going to move forward, right? <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to take the next step because I don't. I'm not a 100 sure. Is it real? You know, I'll, the box just sits in the corner. Does it really kill anything? Is it really doing anything? Uh, I've heard this many, many times where people say. And and I don't know if it's their friends that are telling them this stuff or it's it's their own head. Because they'll say, oh, Mark, um, you know, what do I tell my friend when they tell me it's one of those pyramid schemes? That's doubt. That's doubt. And I just say, well, that's pretty much, I mean, it's literally like it's something I've dealt with since I was in my, you know, since I was in my teens, right? That people are so narrow minded that they'll let something like that hang them up. They're so narrow minded, right? Because they've been trained from high school on that there's only one way to make a living and that's to get this you know like i need to go to college and get a degree and then i need to get a job somewhere and i need to get it make sure they put me on a salary and then i need to live you know 40 years and and work for that company then retire on 40 percent of my it, it's a mindset that they've been programmed with since since they were little i thank god i was programmed the opposite Forget about all that stuff. Like, look, Mark, if you want to make it, you need to be the boss. You don't need to be the employee. You need to own the company. You don't, you need to have freedom of your life. You don't want to be tied down into, into some corporate structure. And so somebody asked you that, you just say, hmm, that's interesting you say that. So where do you work at? Well, I work for General Motors. I'm a, you know, I'm a mechanic, whatever, you know. Oh, that's great. So your business, there's a big CEO at the top and then there's C-level employees at the next level. And then there's the management level here. Then there's all these people. And then way down the bottom, there's you. 
You're the guy out there selling the car or whatever. See, that's a pyramid. That's you never being the owner of General Motors. That's you always being somewhere in the middle. Maybe you could work your way up to middle management one day, but you're never going to be a C-level employee and you're never going to be the owner. Where in a business like this, the day you join the business, you're the owner of the business. You're it. You're the top of the pile. You're it. You're it. Okay. So even if I bring you into the business, you can pass me up. You can become you can become a platinum five ambassador between now and this time next year and be at the top 1% of the entire company. You can pass people who've been in this business for years and years and years and years. How do I know? Because I did it. I joined the business of December 2020, September 2021. We were platinum five ambassadors, high as you can go. And there were people in this business for years and years and years before I ever got involved that never made never made it. And there were C-level employees on the corporate side of the business that my income was higher than their income. So you can't tell me that this thing's a pyramid. It's flipped upside down. This is called direct sales. That's it. It's, it's cutting out the, uh, the advertising department and all these other departments, taking that money and giving it to us to go out and advertise and promote and sell the product. That's all it is. It's super, super simple. And guess what, guys? If you don't want to ever build a team, don't do it. I highly recommend building a team because there's power in numbers. And, and when you have the, the power of, of a lot of people working towards the exact same goal, then the goals come a heck of a lot faster than they would if it's you all by yourself out there trying to do it on your own. But you don't have to. If it's something that you're hung up on, if you're like, man, I don't want to be in one of those things and I'm not going to go out and recruit a bunch of people, then don't do it. All you're doing is you're robbing somebody else, in my opinion, because I could have gone to, to the first person I signed up and I could have sold them an Air and Surface Pro and I could have made $1,000, but instead I let them join my business. And as a result, that one person made almost $100,000 their first year in the business and completely changed that person's life. But I could have been selfish. I could have, I could have said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to help that guy. I just want to keep the money for myself. I could have done that, but I didn't. I chose to say, I'm going to share this with as many people as I can. I mean, a lot of you on this call were came into the business through healthy home shows and things like that, that I was at, that I did, that I could have easily sold you on any of the products, but instead at the end, I chose to offer you a business opportunity. And as a result, you joined the business. I know, I know for a fact, a lot of you on here are people who came in where I could have, the host or anybody could have easily sold their inventory to you, but they chose to allow you to join this business. Buy it at wholesale. I, I, for, I, I gave up my, my big income because, I mean, hey, a healthy, how many, home, Christine and I were the healthy home show leaders the, the minute they launched the thing, right? So if you look at all the healthy home shows we did, if we would have retailed at all those healthy home shows, it would have made me probably an extra $150,000. But I said, no, I said, I, I chose from the very first one I ever did. I said, I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to choose to build a team and I'm going to share this with, with as many people as I can, because the more people I share it with, the more people I empower to go out and achieve their dreams, right? What is it? And then the question is, is like, what is the dream that, that the person has? I can't determine that. Like, I can't sit there and say, well, man, I put this person in the business and all they ever made was, you know, $10,000 in their first year. You know, I'm a failure. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, because that person's dream could have been to have an extra $700 a month in income. And they achieved their dream. It's not up to me to determine somebody's dream. Right. And it's not up to me to make you a success. My job is to provide all the tools. You know, it's like I build the car. It's up to you whether you want to drive it or not. You know, this car's got high performance. It's going to do everything that we say it's going to do. The question is, is are you going to get in the car and drive the thing? Okay. So number one was fear. Number two was doubt. So fear, the opposite of fear is boldness. The opposite of doubt is action. So when you're in, it's, it's no different than having boldness, but to have action. So if you're in doubt, I, my good friend always used to say, doubt will take you out of action, but action takes you out of doubt. So when you're in doubt, 
of of is this is does this business really work and am i really going to make any extra money and uh, you know i just doesn't seem good and the covid's over now nobody cares about viruses which is a total lie i mean who that that is not the case man people are still frozen in fear over the virus over covid over the bird flu the swine flu the who flu right so forget all that mess but the action by you going out I mean, I know Chancey just did a booth up at uh, in Baltimore. Took a step of faith, right? That's good, yeah. You know, he he took a step of faith. He went out, set up a table, and Chancey, unmute your your mic for a second. I want to ask you a couple of questions because here's a guy that joined us in business years ago, two years ago, right? And yeah. then did did other things in life, whatever. But now you go out and you do this show. Did you have all the products when you went to the table? No, sir. Okay. So what did you have on your table? So I had the Aaron Surface Pro Plus, and then I had the Air Mobile. And I just had my uh tube thing and pretty much just a couple of journals. Okay. You broke up. Um, so anyways... What I love about what you did is you didn't you didn't wait till you had everything. I mean, it'd be nice if you had it all, but who cares? Like, I mean, you had enough to get started, right? Right. Uh, you had the 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 living proof, so you could demo the little smoke test to show people. I noticed yeah. on your table because I saw your post that you had a computer playing videos, right? Yeah. Okay, so anybody can do that. You can get a little laptop, set it up, have videos running, and then out yeah. of that show, you you got a sale, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So here he goes. He works a couple of days, sells an Aaron Surface Pro. And out of that, you have leads. Yeah. I also signed about a couple of people up too. Okay. So think about this. What did you do? You took, you got rid of your fear and you have boldness, which I don't think you have fear anyway. Uh, and then you took your doubt, you turned it into action. And as a result, you went from being paralyzed with no momentum to actually now having momentum in your business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. A great so, feeling. <laughs> I just wanted to bring him on here because that's a quick testimony of somebody who actually is doing, who, who was no momentum for a very long time. Like when he started, he, he started with momentum, but then life happens, right? And all that's going to happen throughout your entire, your entire team. I mean, I've got people who started with me two years ago, all of a sudden they popped a life one day. It's like, man, where did that guy come from? I had somebody call me the other day. They said, Mark, I said, I, 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 and they're very, you know, whatever. Hey, Mark, we just got a massive order. I mean, that's getting ready to close. They got approval for the funds. I dropped the machine off six months ago and it's like 40, 50 units is going to come in on one order. I mean, that's somebody who literally, I mean, I, you know, they're doing stuff, but they're, I don't see daily results from the person, but guess what? They're still out there. They, they're still put in action, right? And that's because what I did in the beginning was, see, paralyzing, fear and doubt paralyze you, which, which equals stagnation, right? So when you are stagnant in your business, when you're stagnant, because you you don't want to just do it, right? You're just like, man, I don't want to, like something that like you, you, you know, it's almost like we're afraid of success. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the next level because- <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's mental really, you know, it's like, man, I just don't want to, I, I'm afraid of what could potentially happen if I get there. Right. What, what type of person will I be? What type of team leader will I be? And, and you got to forget about that because that creates stagnation, but boldness and action create momentum. So if you take boldness, which is what Chancey did, right. He took boldness to say, I don't have everything. Okay. But he got excited about it. He felt like something shifted on the inside of him to say, nope, everything that was holding me back before is not going to hold me back today. Something changed, something shifted, right? And then he takes the boldness route to say, I don't care if I have everything. I don't care if, 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 if everything is uh, in order. I, all I need is a table with a, with a mobile and a video and, a, and, you know, borrow somebody's air and surface pro if you have to borrow somebody's tablecloth if you have to, and then go out and do it. And guess what? One sale, boom, just like that. 
Think about that. If I was working in the restaurant business to make even $600, I'd have to work a week. I mean, a whole entire week. I'd have to go in and it's not easy work, guys. It's like, I don't even think I can make that noise. It's like 450 bucks if I worked in a week. It's stupid, right? But I could go stand at a booth for a couple hours a night. And it wasn't like he paid for a trade show. There was an event going on at his church and he, and he was able to set up a booth at it. I mean, guys, there's opportunities literally all around you. Uh, I was talking to Andrew Forsyth yesterday and he said that there's a guy on his team and maybe they're on here, maybe not, that set up a booth at like a health, a health store. So you got approval that every Tuesday you can set up a booth. So a couple of things, if I'm going to do that, I need to be prepared. So, so the next thing I want to tell you is this. So stag, um, to recap, fear and doubt equals paralyzation. So if you're, if you're in fear, you're in doubt, you're paralyzed, your business is stagnant, nothing happens. If water is not moving, it, then bad things happen, right? It gets stagnant and it creates mosquitoes and problems and, and you know, it's just not good, right? Look at the Dead Sea. But boldness and action equal momentum, which equals success, okay? So now that you're out there, now how do you, what do you have to do for momentum? Because momentum is key. Momentum is small steps, very small steps. People think in their mind, man, and well, I have to go out and I have to sponsor 200 people this month in order to have momentum. No, you don't. Momentum is, is little baby steps. Little, little, little things. Like for me, when I started my business, it was texting people on my phone with an exciting text. And I did it, you know, for the first like month. Hey, hey, uh, Bob, I'm so excited. I found a business. The average commission is $900. It's getting ready to launch. It's going to be the best thing since sliced bread or whatever. Uh, it's free to join. Click on my website. Boom, boom, boom. It was consistent, small steps, baby steps over and over and over and over again. First day, four or five people joined me. Second day, six people joined me. You know, then I had 10 people to work with. And then we started to work the business because now I had a little team. So look, did I know everything? No. Did I know how the compensation plan worked? No. Did I have any of the product? I had Air and Service Pro. I didn't have water, laundry, vitamins, none of that stuff. I didn't know, but I knew that it worked because other people had done it in the past. And I was able to build a team quickly. And now we had momentum because we had power in numbers, right? So it was small baby steps, putting little steps together, right? So if you're going to set up a table, be prepared. Have 10 of your um, sheets printed out, right? The, um, the subscribe and save and join uh, with the free subscription sheets printed on the table. 10 sheets printed on the table. And then as people come up to you, you say, listen, right now we're giving you free subscription. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. All you have to do is fill out this paperwork, fill out, put your credit card information in. You can cancel at any time. No big deal. First month's on us. Okay. Pick which one you want. And then you ask them a few questions. You're looking to burn fat. You're looking to, to have more energy. You're looking to protect yourself against viruses or do you just want good overall health? Okay, good. Well, you want us to be healthy? Great. Get the um, essentials for life. Okay. Are you looking to burn some fat, get keto zone. If you want more energy, get, get revived. Okay. And I, if it was me, I would get keto zone. Why? Because it's the most expensive one and you might as well get that one for free. Okay. So if you're going to get one, get the one that costs the most, get it for free. Okay. And, and have those ready at your little booth. So let's just say, I know um, Brian mm -hmm. runs the, the farmer's market. So Brian, if you, if even if in the beginning, if you had zero product on hand, zero, but you had those sheets printed out sitting on your table. And as people come through, you say, hey, listen, I have, I'm involved in a healthcare business or in a health and wellness type business. And we have some amazing products where, where we want to get into the hands of the local people. We're willing to pay for your very first month. Here, just fill out this form. If you can get 10 on a Saturday at the, at the show, just take it, fill it out, hand it back to me when you get it all done. And then he takes it back to his, his house and he enters it into his computer or whatever. And next thing you know, it doesn't look, but Mark, those people joined for free. They're getting a free subscription. They didn't buy anything. I'm not going to make any money off those people. doesn't matter because baby steps equal momentum. It's small, little action, little things of boldness and action, 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 boldness and action that equal into big steps. Okay. So when I joined the business, I signed up five, six people the first day, right? One of those guys, Sajit, who most of you have heard and, and seen, right? 
he just ran like the guy, I mean, a kid couldn't speak English good, didn't have a car, you know, just, like, ah, you know, but everybody he came into contact with, it was Valara, 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 sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, right? And uh, there was one, just one, so one little baby step, guy joins my business for free, and he starts running. Not the second person I joined never did nothing until six months in the business. The third person I, I put in, he, he started to run, right? So, and so we all were taking baby steps. I'm taking baby, baby steps. You're taking baby steps. We're all taking baby steps. But as a result, this accumulation turned into giant leaps. It's just like the guy on the moon, right? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's the same thing. It's one small step in your business equals one giant leap in your family's future and your momentum and everything, right? So think about that. It's about momentum. It's about small steps equal big gains. If you're working out, if you're on a diet, if you're whatever, hey, look, how many of you are on a, on a diet, right? Because it's the first of the year. We're going to go out. We're going to lose weight. We're going to do this thing, right? We're going to I'm going to shred this year. You know, I looked at my thing 2021, I weighed 260 pounds, right? And that's because I ate a lot of bread during the pandemic. And in 2008, I weighed 315 pounds. So I didn't get skinny overnight. It was, it, it's a process that took small baby steps, small things, you know? And to see like in the beginning, I look at my weight drops and I would measure it by the week. Man, this week I lost 2.5 pounds. You know, next week I lost 2.5. Now it's this week I lost four, 10 pounds. Next week I'll lose six pounds. Next week I'm gonna lose eight pounds, whatever. Because I got momentum. Because now all of a sudden my body's working with me. It's not just me out there going, well, I'm gonna cut out Popeye's chicken and, and things like that. And I'm gonna start eating, you know, salad all day. It became a mental shift, right? It takes like 30 days to create a habit. 30 days of your life or 21 days, whatever it is. And then it takes like 90 days for it to really set in, right? To be a, a life-changing thing. So if you're just today's day one in your business, don't wait, don't sit on it. Don't like, you know, it, I call it uh, paralysis analysis, right? So like analysis paralysis. So like you know, there are people who are just so up in their head trying to figure everything out and they won't step out and just do something. Ignorance on fire beats not knowledge on ice, right? So you're better off just being ignorant and being on fire and saying, man, I don't care who it is like, like Sajid did. Ign he was the, the perfect example of ignorance on fire. Didn't know how the comp plan worked. Didn't know anything about the business. Didn't know, didn't know anything. But it beat knowledge on ice because a lot of guys, the other second guy joined my business, he was trying to figure everything out in his head and, you know, well, how's this going to work? And is it one of those pyramid deals? And and his first year, he probably made, you know, 500 bucks. The, the same guy I joined the same day made 98,000. What was the difference? The difference is one guy did, the other guy didn't. That's it. One guy did it, the other guy didn't do it. Okay. So um, just do it, right? The key is, it's like, <laughs> like they say, right? Just do it. What is it? It's do it. Whatever it is for you, okay? It can be, it can be making contacts on a phone, right? So it could be just, hey, I'm going to call each, each and every person that I know, and I'm going to do something today, right? So uh, years ago, I started a business and uh, it was probably 1998 or something like that. And um, I always tell the story because I was always had a job, right? I had always worked for, you know, up until that point, I worked at Wendy's and worked in restaurants. I was a kid. And, um, and then one day I told my wife, I, I don't know if we were married, but I said, I think we were, but I said, hey, Christine, I'm going to, um, no, because we didn't know it was probably a year before we got married. So we were just engaged. And I said, Christine, I'm going to start a business. And um, I remember starting my business and um, quitting my job and like, I'm going to do this thing, right? And the very first day, um, I didn't get up until like 11. Um, I wore a bathrobe all day. I watched Days of Our Lives in the afternoon. I mean, I, I cooked like a big breakfast. And my wife, or my wife, Christine, I know she was working. What, and I, she was in school at the time. So she's off. She's in, at Duquesne. 
she's got a career. She's a career woman. She's doing her thing. And here I am at my place, just like doing nothing. But I had, I started my own business. And then the next day, same thing. And then I realized, I'm like, man, I'm not making any money in this thing. And the problem was I had nobody telling me what to do. I went from having a boss that every day I'd show up and he said, okay, Mark. And at the time I was on door-to-door -door sales. So the guy would say, we'd go in, we'd have a meeting, we'd get all riled up. And then we'd go to Long John Silver's and have lunch. And then we'd go out and like hit the streets and we'd knock doors and we'd make sales. And then I got a paycheck for it. But there was structure that my own personal business never had because I never worked for myself. So day four, day five, I said, man, I need to do something. And so I took a, a spare bedroom in my house and I made it into an office. I got a desk and I got a shelf and I got, I, I built a little office for myself, right? And then I got a calendar, a paper calendar. And look, I mean, I have piles because we're getting ready to move here in about a month. And so now we're, we're like, you know, pre-packing mode. But all around my house, I have, I've got calendars. I don't know if you can see it or not. But, uh, there, I got tilted. There it goes. Anyways, whatever. Paper calendar. I got 20, 20, 20, 20. I mean, I could go back from 1997 and find calendars, right? Paper calendars. And I started to write myself a schedule. Get up at this time. Make so many calls in the morning. So I knew, like, I couldn't knock doors for my business in the morning, but I could make a few phone calls. And I needed momentum. We sold products that were catered towards like, you know, people from, it was in this very nostalgic brand, right? So I said, hey, I'm going to call nursing homes and I'm going to ask if they have entertainment, you know? And um, can I come in and be entertainment for the day? And I, they say, yeah, sure. If you want to come in, I'm going to bake a cake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little presentation. And they were like assisted living. So people still had money and it wasn't like they were like laying there with a tube and they're, you know, like they, they were, you know, moving around, playing bingo or whatever. And so I go and I do a little presentation. They all love me because I was, you know, 20 year old kid, you know, like, and I was bringing back memories and whatever. And at the end of the day, I'd make like 40 bucks, right? But it was momentum. And then, so I would book those little events. And then I would go knocking doors for a few hours, door to door, you know, with, with a big case of product and knock the door. Hey, I got these liniments and salves and ointments and stuff. Are you interested? You know, um, and I'd make a sale, 20 bucks. I wasn't lighting the world on fire. My first day in the business, I made $20. So most people would have quit, right? Because your normal job, you're going to at least make a hundred bucks, right? <laughs> I made 20 my very first day in the business, but I didn't quit. And then I said, well, what else can I do? Well, maybe I can book a little craft show, right? Because all these churches have like craft shows, you know, first Methodist church, the second Baptist church, the third Lutheran church, the fourth Presbyterian church. They all got some kind of little show that they were doing on the weekend. So I called them and said, can I set up a table uh, and just show what I got? And they say, yeah, sure. And so at that show, I would go and I would sell some products, but then I would get leads to book home parties at night. And then next thing you know, I'm doing parties six nights a week, you know, and then I'm booking bigger shows and, and it led to more leads. And this is not, my, my 12th month. So the first month in the business, I made 20, $20 first day that the last month of that year, we brought in 20,000. Okay. So I went from making $20 first to the December, that December, we're talking 1999 or 1998 or whatever, to, uh, that our business brought in $20,000 one month. Number one in sales, number one in marketing, number one in product, winning awards from the company, speaking at conventions, all that stuff. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. But the thing is, is what led to it was small steps, right? It was little things and it was structured to my business. I had to have some kind of a structure that said, okay, because if you don't build a structure, if you don't fit Valar into your life, it's never going to do anything for you, right? So it's like this call is momentum. You being here today is momentum. You're 16 people out of like 1,900 people on my team. 16 of you showed up today. <clears throat> You'll be the most successful 16 people I've got. Why? Because you're doing it. It's little steps. It's momentum. Little things, little things, little things. If you if you agree with it, grab a hold of it because that's you, right? So what you're doing. So then what you do is you block it out. 
man, I'm really busy, Mark. I, I got a lot going on in my life right now, right? I got this happening and that happened. I got, I just moved and I got a job and I got this thing. So let me ask you a question. What day is your Valara day? Is it Monday? So you could do Monday as your Valara day. Monday, here's, here's my schedule. Monday, get up, do my devotions, pray a little bit, read my Bible, whatever. But then the next step is jump on the call, 11 to 12. Okay, great. Then from 11, from noon till six, seven at night, when we do the national call, you, you set a plan. I'm going to call, I'm going to make phone calls for an hour or texts and phone calls, follow up, you know, and then I'm going to try to book myself a little craft show or trade show or find a church that's willing to have me come in or uh, an organization, or I'm going to try to set a few appointments this week with nursing homes and hospitals and dentist's office and whatever, right? I'm going to book a healthy home show. I just did one on, on Saturday, virtual. It's the, it's literally any of you can do it. If you're like, if you have Zoom, you don't need me because I'm already on there. I, you play a 12 minute recording of me doing an overview of the product. You play another three, four minute video of me doing uh, the clothes on, on the, I, I like the clothes on the, on the pro pack on whole house protection or pro pack, which is two air service pros of water and laundry. I present the business, Pastor Eric's on it, Mike Jackson's on it. And then at the end, you go, okay, guys, we have we have 24 hours to make a decision. Do you want to join me? Do you want to buy product? Or do you just want to get the free subscription? Whatever, whatever you want to do, there's a lot riding on this thing because you can get a bunch of free product. Super easy, guys. Super easy, okay? There you go. Sold a pro pack on a Zoom using Mark's 12-minute video. Perfect. <clears throat> and look, and the, set yourself up for success. Maybe your your one of your steps is to take your Zoom account and upgrade it to a pro account so that you can do unlimited videos, unlimited time, screen sharing, recordings. You know, that was something that was tough for me in the beginning because I was like, man, you know, we started this business. I was, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money. You know, I mean, my first month in Valar, I made nine dollars. OK, and I knew right away I need, I need to upgrade my Zoom. And we did. And we, we said, okay, I'm going to invest in this. It cost me a hundred and some dollars, but I upgraded my Zoom. I made an investment in my business. Second month in the business, we made $9,000. Okay. So you think about that, that what did I do? It was nothing spectacular. And then once we knew second month in the business, we were platinum one. I started setting goals. Hey, by the end of this year, I want a thousand people on my team and, I, and I'd love to be a platinum five. Notice that didn't say I'm going to be a platinum five. So I'd love to be one because to me, going, I've never, ever made it to the top of a, of a corporation like that in that short amount of time. So I said, I'd love to be a platinum five, but I want to, you know, I want a thousand people on my team because I knew if I could put the thousand people on my team first, who cares about the title? That if I put just, I need a thousand people total on my team, the platinum five will come. Right. And so I set myself some goals, small, it's, it's a mental shift. Who are you in this company? Who are you in life? What are you going to be? What are you going to achieve? Right. I do it on, I, in fact, I just gave a quick testimony, personal testimony is that in 20, 2009, so to 2008 was probably the greatest like year of my culinary career. I was a restaurant owner at the time. Um, I had the opportunity to do, to work in four Michelin rated restaurants in, or three Michelin star restaurants in one year, which if you know anything about the food business, that's the top of the top. And I owned my own restaurant. We were at the top of the world, blah, 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 blah. 2009 economy crash, we lost everything. So in 2009, at the end of 2009, I, I sat down and started mm -hmm. writing a book about it, right? And I set it out. I'm like, man, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to do this thing. It's like talk about baby steps. I'm just going to do one step at a time. Um, and for years, I put it off. For years, I didn't move forward. For years, I would do, I'd write maybe one month or a couple weeks or whatever. And it literally just sat there, okay? And so... Just last year at this time, I look, I pulled up my, my, uh, my files and I looked at everything and I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta finish my book. I gotta finish this thing because it's now 14 years, guys, 14 years of just sitting. Right. And so I sat down. I just like, I made it a point to write 
to write. And I mean, like, I got to finish it because it's not like a book. It's not like a novel where I could just end it. Like, this is a real life story that happened. So I had to put all the pieces together to tie everything together. And like two days ago, I'm sitting there, I'm writing and I finished like, and it feels like, man, I can't believe it. I feel, that's easy. It's only 103,000 words, right? It's only 200, 300 pages of writing, but it took me 14 years to do it. All I'm saying is, is that there's a difference between letting it sit and then just picking it up and doing something little every day, every day. Every, now the book's not done. It still needs edited. It still needs structure. It still needs to be published. But everything that you need, you already have it. It's all there. Everything that you need. Man, I need more finances in my life. Man, you got it. They call it cash flow because it's cash is flowing all around us. It's like, it's like literally the, the, there is, there's opportunities all around us, but we're so frozen that we, we can't see it. So get boldness, get action, take the baby steps, say today is going to be my day. I'm going to make a positive change in my life and realize that everything that I need, everything that you need for your success, for your life, you've already got it. And so who knows? I mean, that could be. A, and so what's funny, though, is if you look at my Facebook profile under under like your job title, I put future New York Times bestselling author. And I put that in like a year and a half ago or whatever. That's a proclamation of a goal that. I just put it out there. If it, Will it happen? I believe it will, because you know why? Because I put it out there. Whatever you put your mind to, you're going to do it. Whatever you aim for, you're going to hit it. So at least I put something out there. I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see doors opening. I can see speaking engagements. I can see opportunities, things happening. But it sat for so many years. My wife and I, um, you know, we bought a house finally, you know, after all these years in, uh, in Florida. And it's closing here soon. And um, I said, oh, man, I have the storage shed I've had here. And I know Chancey probably helped me move a bunch of stuff in there years ago, right? And so um, I got my storage unit and I said, man, the price is high. I'm going to go in and get it switched to a different one to lower the, the rate. And so I switched it up and everything. We're moving stuff. And there's this one big box. It's not labeled. It's not marked. And I'm like, man, we should take that box home and go through it because I'm not just going to move it from one shed to the other until I see what's in it, right? And there was some, some there's something I was looking for, like some checks and stuff. So I was like, let's take this home and look at it. So I go in, look at it. And, and now listen, when I was in Bible school, I didn't have any good shoes, right? We, we, we left everything and we came to Florida and like my shoes were junk. Somebody gave me a pair of shoes that had like holes in the bottom of it, right? And, uh, and I was, man, I wish I had some good dress shoes. So I always remember, like, I always had good dress shoes from my, like, you know, from the past, but where the heck were they? So anyways, I open up this box and in the box is seven boxes of my dress shoes that have been in my storage shed probably since 2018 that I could have been using. And it hit me right there. Everything we need, we already have it. Everything you need is already there, but you've locked it up somewhere. You, and all you have to do is unlock it. It's your potential. Your potential is there, but it's locked up. Your income is there, but it's locked up. And it's not locked up because of Joe Biden and the economy and because of the cost of eggs and because of the COVID vaccine and none of that crap. What's locking it up is your head and your fear and your, and your lack of momentum and all that stuff. That's what's locking it up. In the worst times, the worst financial times is the time for that where most millionaires and billionaires are made. So, hey, guess what? When I was losing everything in 2009, somebody took everything that I had for pennies on the dollar. One, one person, myself, was positioned to lose. The other person was in a position to gain. Where are you going to be in, in 2023? So when the economy looks bad and the world looks crazy and, and you, you, I mean, I don't even watch the news. So I don't even know what the heck is going on. I just get the updates. And you say, oh man, the world's going crazy right now. Everything's nuts, great. Because when there's uncertainty and you have certainty, whether it's in your faith or it's in your business or whatever it is, and you can bring that certainty to people, that's gonna elevate everything.
it's going to change your life, change your position, change your economic situation, change your pay structure, pay, change your world. Hey, 2000, uh, 2020, in 2020, the world went nuts, right? You go into stores, put your mask on, you loser, you know, uh, make sure you're social distance. You're going the wrong way down the aisle. You know, how many of you remember that stuff, right? I go into get a loaf of bread. I'm walking the wrong way down the aisle, getting yelled at by some little old lady, right? You're, you're not going the right direction. There's an arrow on the floor, Sonny. And guess what? That whole time, never lost my head. Never fell for any of the, the stupid things that were going on in the world. Never put a mask on. I always walked the wrong way down the aisle. Because guess what? My life never changed. I could care less. But guess what? I found an opportunity in all that mess that changed my life forever. And it still exists to this day. I found Valara. I said, look, everybody in the world is going crazy. Everyone in the world is going ballistic. No, everybody's scared of the air around them. No, I mean, people are literally sitting in a car with a mask on. I was driving up the street from my church and a guy's walking down the road by himself with a mask on. I pulled up. I said, hey, bro, what's going on with the mask? And he got mad at me. He like started screaming and swearing at me. Um, but I just was curious, like, dude, you're alone. You're in the middle of nowhere. Like, why are you wearing that? It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. But I, I kept the level head. I kept optimism. I said, Hey, if the world's going to go nuts around me, then I'm going to find an opportunity to, to make money on this deal. I'm going to find an opportunity to not only do that, but to help other people do it. And on top of that, I'm going to protect as many people as I possibly can and stop the spread of the virus. Because guess what? 14 days didn't slow the spread. But guess what did? My air and surface pro. All right. So I have a solution to the pollution in the air, but I also have a solution to people's economic problems. All right. So how many of you are willing to jump on, right, and do it? Just do something today. Don't worry about the outcome of it. Don't worry about it. You can go set up, hey, I could be like Kim. I could set up at a, a fair and, and at the end of the, the 10 days or whatever she was at that fair, walk out of it and go, man, not much happened. But guess what? One little seed got planted into one person that now could potentially be orchards of, of opportunity for Kim, right? It could be orchards and orchards of opportunity for Kim. So don't ever look at the results of that one day, right? Don't ever look at it. Man, I took me 14, like I could, I could be like, man, it took me 14 years to put this book together, wasted all this time I wasted and all this stuff. But who's to say that it doesn't, I mean, God knows that it comes out at the perfect place at the perfect time in my life, whenever I'm prepared to step into that next chapter of my life. And that now people are willing to receive what I'm putting on paper that they maybe didn't, they wouldn't have received in 2010, right? So when is the day? Today is the day. When should you start? Right now. What should you do? Baby steps. Little steps. Positive steps. Little things of action. Write yourself a schedule. Call a few people. Book yourself a trade show or craft show, right? Do an HHS virtually. Send my 12-minute video out to a few people today and say, listen, I'm taking orders. What would you like? Call people about the Keto Zone sale. Buy two, get one free on Keto Zone. Call your teams. If you got teams and say, hey, guys, how long have you been in my business? Oh, a year and a half. Have you ever done a subscription? No, I'm going to get you a free one. All it takes is you filling out this. Because guess what? Even people in the business can get one month free. It'll bring life to your business, it'll bring life to your finances, and then we can all have success in 2023. Look, guys, if you if you're successful in 2023, um, the only person that you can credit to your success is you. And if you're a failure in 2023, the only person that you can credit your failure to is you. It's not me. It's not Pastor Eric. It's not Mike Jackson. It's not Valar. It's not the government. The only person that you can credit your success or failure to is you. Because you're in control of your life, of your destiny, of everything. So anyways, it's 11, uh, whatever it is, 59, 55. I can't see the clock. Um, but that's it. That's all I have for you today. If you guys have any